Hello, Gunner James 105. So this isn't particularly the most, um, oh, I don't know, it's not a rifle, it's not a grenade, it's, uh, it's a pair of boots. But these are Canadian military boots that I wore when I was in. And these would have been around in the early 80s all the way up till they were still using them when the CAD Pat had come out in 02. They were still in use then. And then later, I think it was the, uh, these these are the Mark III, so the Mark IV would have replaced these. But yes, Mark III was uh, preceded by a Mark I and a Mark II. And the um, thing that, I, the reason that I've got these boots here is that I'm uh, seeking uh, help also uh, from those that may be more knowledgeable or have more information on the Mark II or Mark I, because in my search, um, I'm finding it very difficult to get any information. So I've come up with, uh, for example, I searched out a very good source, which is the uh, CanadianSoldiers.com, and um, there's three photographs that are not close-ups. And in those photographs, they, it, it's just not, it's not clear the differences because they look so similar. So if you've got, if you've got uh, them, you know, the picture on the left is a Mark I, the, the one next to it is a Mark II and a Mark III. All I can really make out is perhaps a Mark I might have a bit of a toe cap, don't know. And then they do refer to um, a pronounced welt on the sole. What does that mean? That's on the Mark I, so a pronounced welt on the sole. So, yeah, that's about the only pictures I can come up with um, and information. So these these here were worn with your uh, combat uniform and your work dress. And so um, these were the t these were the last I had this is my second pair. So I kind of wore out my first pair and uh, was I was issued a second pair and when I had uh, left I turned in a, a a separate set that I had so that I could keep these. So these are the actual uh, set that I had when I was in. For some reason, I don't know what the heck happened. Uh, my feet got bigger since uh, I was in, and I can't really fit these anymore. Uh, so I guess my feet uh, grew. I can't believe how much smaller these are than, compared to what I wear now. But um, these also are on this video because I've got another set in my search for the. Uh, Mark one, two, or Mark one or two. I I did find a nice set that uh, a fellow YouTuber may be interested in um, in purchasing from me. But uh, uh, I guess it all depends on uh, you know what he thinks of the conditions. So I was kind of making this video uh, for him as well. The sole. So this would be what your foot would be on. I should say the insole. And then uh, we've got this mesh bottom, so that's for air circulation. So it keep your feet a little cooler, perhaps, and a bit bit of cushion. But that's the type of uh, a sole that would go into that boot. And then you get yourself a nice pair of socks. So these are um, what are they? Yeah, 70, 78 percent wool, twenty one percent nylon. And uh, was that one percent spandex? So you're you're allowed to wash these in warm water. And uh, yeah, so this happens to be a nice new pair. Um, I don't think the ones that I was issued had this this red band here. They were just straight gray. And then uh, part of the uh, part of the kit you would get for uh, some rainy wet weather. Your combat boot would fit right inside these. So these um, rubber boots made everything really heavy. So also made in Canada. That's nice. Um, these, uh, yeah, so the, the boots, um, they're... The actual manufacturer for the boots was Greb, which made, made a lot of boots in Canada uh, for the civilian purposes as well. So there's your uh, your rubber boots that would go over top of those. Oh, what's the word? What do they call those? 
Uh, <laughs> galoshes. I think they, they were called galoshes. And so uh, the other item that you would get with your boots is the, uh, because you weren't polishing them, you weren't using a, a boot polish. And so what we needed to do was have some sort of a, a water repellent, and that's what this is. So you've got the uh, um, military um, designations and uh, so leather water repellent year of manufacture 1983 and uh, capo capo has been around for qu quite some time and uh, capo if i had some uh, those little uh, bricks of, of blanco from uh, world war ii or prior that was uh, in canada that was it was capo that was looking after that i actually have uh, some other uh, you know i mean here's a a newer tin Capo still still in business doing that, so this is a uh, this is really nice stuff for waterproofing your boots and even even the Capo brand uh, neat foot oil. I've used that on some uh, well leather slings and and things like that, rifle slings. And this is very suspiciously though. This one here uh, that's a you know web web cleaner, but. It's, it's the IT company. Who the heck is the IT company? Somehow I think it's Capo, but is that tin? You know, unless they just happen to have the same supplier of tins, but... So yeah, I don't know. That's just a little bonus on this video. But here are the boots that uh, I was concerned with. The condition of these boots... For the fellow YouTuber, as I say, that was looking for, well, he was looking for a Mark I or a Mark II, but may still be interested in a Mark III. Um, well, that was the other thing, too, is I think there may be on your Mark II and Mark III, they have that little cutout there to give you that, that flex. Whereas I think the Mark I may not have had that. And there may have been differences, just differences on the sole. And there's that grab, as I say, on my boots, that brand name doesn't even appear. That marking isn't even there but that's your uh, that's your size Canadian size 11 F or metric and millimeters for the length and width on there there is a bit of uh, wear on the, the sole but a nice clean boot and uh, the laces are maybe needing replacing they've kind of opened up in a few spots but uh, otherwise, there's there's not a darn thing wrong with these. They actually would be a lot more comfortable than mine because that looks like, you know, I mean, they've been worn and they're, they're broken in. So they'd probably be very comfortable boots. And so, uh, yeah, for, uh, for a, a close-up view, view of this for the Mark III, this is the, the other side. But yeah, in, in in pretty darn nice condition. You now there isn't there isn't a problem with a seam or a, or anything. Like I say, other than the, the odd lace with a little bit of a opening, you know, and it's all nice and fairly clean, clean inside. That's not the the military liner in there. It's a different type of uh, of insole. And then uh, the last piece that I was going to mention on this video is the fact that I have the, the actual box that it came in, that my pair came in. So you've got your little handle like so. And it's just a box, nothing special there. And it came with, the, uh, with instructions for, for the care. So we've got your... Uh, Boots, Combat, General Service, uh, Mark III, Black. So, if you're interested in uh, anything that's on here, let me see if I can get that a little closer and hopefully it focuses. And uh, if there was something for uh, research material that you wanted to be able to read off this card, pause it at any point. So I'll just move across it slowly. I do believe if I flip it over, then we're going to do the, uh, it would be the French 
French version. Sorry about that. It's a lot of information there. Not too close. And so that is also it had a little little string on there. Oh, there it is. It's still there. It's almost breaking free. But that was just attached to the boots, and sure enough, yes, it is in French on that side. So there that is, uh, they're referring to, I believe it's the T3000. Let me just check that, uh, I don't know, it doesn't say anything about T3000 on there, but I'm sure they're referring to this same type of stuff. And there again, as far as instructions on that. That's uh, the waterproofing. So, Hope you enjoyed that little boot video. Thanks for watching.